This is Miss Carrie from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today we have another inspiring video collab for you featuring stencils. There are quite a few ladies on our team participating in this video collab. Each of their project links can be found in the description below. Let's take a look at the stencil I am going to show you how to make in Cricut Design Space. This wave stencil was cut using this matte stencil film from the Close to My Heart website. It comes with four sheets that are 9 by 12 and it is super simple to cut out using your Cricut machine. Let me show you how you can create one of these stencils in Design Space for your scrapbook page. I'm going to be searching my image library for a wave image and you can see there's quite a few that I own under my purchased images. None of these really stood out to me so I also searched for the term ocean and happened upon this really cute title that I thought would work and you can see this title comes in two parts it has both a wave image and the title itself now I realize you guys might want to know which image set this comes from so if you right click on the image and go down to image info you can click on view cartridge and you'll be able to see the entire collection that this comes from which is the you are here collection this is just another way to search for an image in your image library when you want to know which image set it comes from. All right, let's get back to manipulating that image and creating the stencil. I only need the wave portion of this title, so I'm going to go ahead and delete sail away, then resize the wave to a half an inch, 0.5 in height. I'm going to duplicate that wave image so that I can weld the two together. I've also duplicated a third image which I am hiding, and I speak about why I do this in one of my previous videos. Now that I have the two images, I'm going to go ahead and weld them together. And this first try, it didn't quite turn out how I wanted, but after a couple tries, I have the look that I want for that welded wave image. To create that stencil, we're going to duplicate this wave image multiple times. You can choose how high you want it. Just remember each wave is a half an inch high, so when you total those all together, it will give you the total height of your stencil. Select all of your images and align them to the left so that all of those wave images line up. At this point, you might have to move a few of those images so that all of the wave tops are touching. Once they are all touching each other, then you can select all of the images again and choose Weld to create one solid image. Now at this point, you could just cut out this wave overlay and use it as a stencil, but I want to show you how I make a more solid stencil that's easier to use when you're sponging and using texture paste. You're going to start by inserting a square and sizing it to a little bit larger than the stencil image you have there on the canvas. Quite a few people try to slice at this point, but let me show you what happens when you hit slice. As you can see, it does slice out that wave stencil, but when I remove each one of the images, I no longer have a stencil. I now have a solid shape cut out of a rectangle with all of those little bits in between the waves coming out. So instead of slicing, we are going to create a frame and weld our wave images inside that frame. You're going to go ahead and duplicate your rectangle, making it the same size as your stencil. It's going to work best if you change the color of one of those rectangles so that you can see what you're doing. Once you've sized that second square, you can go ahead and hide your wave image, select the two squares, and align center. Once they've been aligned center, you can go ahead and slice out that center rectangle to form your frame. You can go ahead and bring back that welded image, select both images again and align center so that the wave is right in the center of the frame, then weld all of that together. If you're using the stencil film I showed you earlier, you're going to want to select custom materials and you'll do this by either changing the dial and selecting browse all materials or if you have a maker, you'll just select browse materials. Now you can search for stencil and you'll select stencil film. If you'd like, you can save this in your favorites by clicking the star. Once you've chosen the material, you can go ahead and start cutting with your fine point blade. You're going to want to make sure you have a super sticky green mat so that your stencil film doesn't buckle up while it's cutting. Before we start making the scrapbook layout, I want to show you the difference between the two stencils. So we have the overlay without the frame and the overlay with. 
When you use this overlay with the frame, it works just fine. You still get the wave image, but it's just not as sturdy to me. I can tape it down with post-it tape. I can still ink and sponge it, but when I'm using texture paste or any thicker medium, it seems to slide and want to buckle up. Using the stencil with the frame, I have the opportunity to be able to tape down the frame using my post-it tape. Having that frame makes my stencil a little bit sturdier and it prevents it from buckling up as badly as just using this overlay, which tends to be a little bit flimsier without the frame. Now that I've shown you the difference between the two stencils and I've shown you why I created the one without the frame, let's go ahead and get started creating that layout. Here I have a piece of white daisy cardstock and some glacier and mint ink. I have taped down both the cardstock and the stencil in place using that post-it tape. Now I'm going to use a sponging tool to create that wave background with the stencil. I'll apply both the glacier and the mink ink onto that white daisy cardstock, creating kind of an ombre and mixed water effect matching the waves in the swimming pool. Be careful inking too close to the frame or you will have a straight edge of your ink. You're going to want to leave just a little bit below that frame blank and as we move the stencil here you'll be able to just line up the bottom waves with the waves at the top and continue inking that white daisy cardstock. Now I can remove the stencil and just line it up with those top waves and tape it down onto my all-purpose mat here and start inking again. I can just go ahead and reuse that post-it tape a couple of times. It works really well for projects just like this. Speaking of post-it tape, I've had a few people ask me how I store it. This is our washi tape dispenser that you see my post-it tape in. This is something that is currently on clearance on my website, so there's not very many of them left. For me, it works perfectly for dispensing that post-it tape. We're on the final portion of creating that inked background, and as you can see, I did flip my white daisy cardstock to make it easier to work with. I am using more mint than glacier on this top portion so that I can achieve that ombre look. Once I'm done applying the ink, we have a beautiful wave background using that stencil we created in Design Space. Let me tell you about the other materials we're going to use to create this layout. I'm going to be using the Seize the Day paper and sticker packet. As you can see, these are ocean themed, but I decided to use mine for a swimming lesson layout. When we take a look at all the patterns in this paper pack, you're probably thinking about all the summer photos and beach photos and vacation photos that you currently have. Let me show you how I use them to create a layout of my son's swimming lessons. I've chose the net pattern for my base and I have matted my photos in some sapphire cardstock. These photos were taken a long time ago from way across the pool, so I had to trim them down quite a bit. I've also chosen this striped pattern that will go over here on the right. We have our wave background page that we created that will go right here in the center. And I have some navy zip strips that came off the top of that patterned paper to match the navy on my photo mats. Off camera, I went a little crazy with the stitching. I have some zigzag stitching, some straight stitching. I distressed the edges of the paper as I stitched. And as you can see, it adds quite a bit of texture and some fun vertical lines on the layout. I also have a pile of stickers over here that I've chosen for this layout. This came off of the sticker sheet. We have this little yellow strip, the buoy, a couple of sentiments, some of the fish. All of the stickiness was removed from the back of these stickers using my anti-static bag. On this layout, I'm going to be placing all three photos horizontally across the page. The buoy is going to go up in the left hand corner with that yellow stitch sticker. I'm going to be using that O buoy for the title to reflect how my son felt with his swimming lessons and add that happy place sentiment right next to the O buoy. The anchor tag is going to be tucked underneath all of those elements to help anchor them up there in the corner. These two fish are going to be placed in the lower right hand corner to reflect him and his instructor along with this cute little yellow heart. I've chosen this red stitch sticker that I had planned on putting underneath the fish but I prefer it right here against the photos. It goes well on this side. I have these two pieces of journaling on some linen cardstock that I have typed up on the computer and these are going to be tucked right under the photos. I've grabbed some mink twine to place across the top of these journaling strips. I'm going to place some adhesive on the back of that mink cardstock and then wrap the mink twine around the top a couple of times. 
I've grabbed my Versamat and my straight edge to make sure that my photos are aligned evenly across the page. Once I've placed that straight edge onto the three and a half mark, I can adhere my photos down onto my background. After tucking those two journaling strips behind the photos, I decided to start adding each one of those sticker embellishments. Some of these go flat on the page and others I use thin and thick 3D foam tape to be able to lift them up off the page. As you can see, the buoy and that flag go flat onto the page. I add a little bit of thin foam tape onto the yellow strip so that it pops up just a little bit. I add thick foam tape onto the O boy title so that it pops up even more and I add a combination of both thick and thin foam tape onto that happy place sentiment so it pops up a little bit higher than the oh boy title. When I use 3D foam tape on my layouts, it allows me to have a multi-dimensional look. These little fish just pop right up off the page and I haven't had any issues with it adding too much bulk to my albums. Now that I've added all of the little embellishments I planned on adding earlier, I decided I need a little bit more here next to the journaling. I have red in the buoy and red in the stripe against the photos. I needed a little bit more red to make this page pop. In my stash, I found all of these paper clips. If you've enjoyed Close to My Heart as long as I have, you probably have some of these in your stash. And this time of quarantine is the perfect time to start using up some of those items you may have forgotten about. As you saw, I started with the large paper clips, then realized I like the smaller ones much better. I'm just placing them right along the side of the stitching here to create a fun little whimsical border. Once I have those down, I realized that I needed something in the corner of this journaling. So I've grabbed a little sea star sticker and another little sentiment that says in paradise. I felt like I needed another gray element a little bit larger than that sea star. So I grabbed this die cut from the seize the day die cut collection. I like how it looks behind the sea star here. Now I can go ahead and glue all of these down using some adhesive and foam tape. I wanted to add one more element at the top of this journaling card, so I created a decorative knot out of Ming Twine, frayed the ends, and then adhered it right next to that yellow star. I love the way this looks and how it adds a little bit of texture on the journaling card. When it came time to add the paper clip border, I debated adding them with stitches versus just gluing them down. I decided I already had enough stitches on the page, so I grabbed my liquid adhesive and a pair of tweezers and started sticking these down. Now it was a little bit tricky, they did slide a little bit, but once the glue dried, they stayed in place and the glue was clear, you couldn't even tell that it was underneath each one of the paper clips. I added an additional paper clip up near the title and then grabbed some of my Seize the Day dots so that I could add some blue embellishments onto the page. I felt like I wanted a little bit more blue on this layout so that your eyes were drawn to the photos that are matted in sapphire blue. And now our layout's complete. As you can see, I did add a few additional embellishments on this layout. I frayed some of that mink twine and placed it behind the title and behind the photos. I also re-matted my photos. After taking a look at it, I wanted a more rustic navy color to match the two zip strips. I do like how this layout turned out with the wave stencil background to match the waves in the pool my son created when he was learning to jump and dive during swimming lessons. I hope this layout inspired you to try something new and that you enjoyed learning how to create stencils in Cricut Design Space for your scrapbook layouts. There are so many possibilities when it comes to using stencils and each one of our creative design team members has a project they are wanting to show you using stencils they created in Cricut Design Space. The next person in our creative design team video collab is Andrea Sherman at Girl Plus Paper. You can find her link below along with all of the other creative design team members project links. New projects are added every week to my blog and YouTube channel. If you enjoyed today's layout and wish to see more projects in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification icon so that you are notified when projects are added. If you'd like to see other projects that I've created with this creative design team, you can view the entire collection using the link above. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.